all right hi so this is um well <laughs> the chat is not working uh i am not surprised I, I don't know why it's not working but it definitely isn't working for some reason also i'm hearing myself in my mic and my ears <laughs> i don't know what is happening with all the hardware and the, the software and the technology and all the i am confused yes but at the same time let's get started so as you may know I have been doing a lot of collabs lately with other VTubers, which also happens to include D&D. Um, &D. So it's been something that I've heard a lot, but I haven't got time to actually try it out. Firstly, because I don't have friends who play it. And secondly, the friends who play it are kind of different in a sense whereby they, I don't feel comfortable like joining them because they've been doing it for years and i've not done it before so there is no community for me to do this whatsoever but i have been interested so there was this like um vtuber server that i joined recently aeon server and then after that i found a lot of people so there are a couple of us who have never played dnd before and then flashbang is hosting so if you want to know flashbang he will be coming on later to help me out with this at about 9 30 so about 30 minutes from now and then angel who was the organizer of this group dnd um that would be taking place on i think estimated 19th of june right so she gave me like she gave all of us like this dragon age rpg quick start guide which is basically like the storybook or, or like the guidebook for this event hosting then flashbang is like the game master or something like that so he would be running the course of all these things i don't know how this works like i'm pretty sure there's something like arranging stats and i'm um, using dice to like roll for luck or something i have no idea <laughs> honestly i have no idea and then you have character creation so I'm like kind of stuck at that stage like what am I doing who am I what is this about <laughs> right right so I I'm looking at this guide you we won't be able to see it because I'm not showing it um too much things to to handle so yes there is this guide and then um on the very first page after the D&D poster there is a map so apparently Dragon Age is kind of like a series so yes it is um I, I don't know how old this is but it is popular i think it could be popular so there is an introduction um and it also like tells you what are the rules and all that which i will be going through one at a time hopefully i don't like mess up all right so introduction you hold in your hands the gateway to the tabletop pen and paper dragon age role-playing game it includes everything you need abbreviated rules player character heroes and a full adventure to try this acclaimed RPG. The Dragon Age RPG is based on BioWare's award-winning video game Dragon Age Origins and its existing and future sequels. If you don't know anything about Dragon Age yet, first and foremost, welcome. We at Green Ronin hope you have a great time giving our role-playing game a try. Here's the first thing you should know. Dragon Age is a dark fantasy setting. It's a world of Thedas is not a place of fairies, fairies and unicorns. It's a grim medieval setting that is often brutal and at times unfair. The player characters must routinely make difficult moral decisions where there are no correct, right or clear choices. The setting's hero, the player characters, also known as PCs, start at the bottom and must prove their mettle through adventuring. Not every challenge can be overcome. At times, the heroes must choose discretion over valor. Dark spawn stalk leaders, evil creatures who sally forth from dark underground places. In some areas, a supernatural blight stains the land itself, sickening crops and befouling the waters. Mentors and patrons sometimes offer assistance to Dragon Age player characters, but they usually have their own agendas as well. If you are already familiar with Dragon Age video games, then what you know about its world of theaters will enrich your experience here. But beware that you will find the gameplay different between the video games and this role-playing game. Things will not always work exactly as you expect. If you are already familiar with Dragon Age RPG, perhaps you own the boxed set one, and maybe you've even played before. You can still take advantage of the adventure included here 
it's an excellent scenario for introducing new players to the game. The quick start summary of the RPG's rules is also a convenient reference. Right? Basically, they are from a video game and they turned it into a book. That is what I got so far. So what's included? There are three parts to this quick start. The first is a condensed guide to the rules of Dragon Age RPG, including a reference sheet that players can keep handy during the play. So I'm assuming it's gonna be this one. The second is an adventure called An Arl's Ransom. Uh huh? Okay, I don't know that. The third is a set of five pre-generated player characters. Uh, okay. What else you'll need? As with ro most role-playing games, to play this quick start, you'll need at least two people. Through 4 to 6, though 4 to 6 is best. Oh, okay. Okay, so far in the collab, I think we have 6 people. One will be the Game Master. Alright, that Game Master is gonna be Flashbang. And the others will be players. You'll also need at least 3 regular 6-sided dice. Ideally, one of the dice should be a different color from the others. You'll also need some various, some copies of various portions of this quick start, but more on that later. Uh, it's a digital copy, so we have all of it. If you've never played, if you've never roleplayed before, that's me. If you're interested in giving this thing a try, but you have no idea what tabletop roleplaying is all about, that's great. Roleplaying is some of the most fun you'll ever have with your friends. But to teach the basics of roleplaying is a bit beyond this quick start. Grab your computer, fire up your web browser, and search for some basic info. The Wikipedia page, role-playing game, pen and paper, is a little dry. But as a good starting point as any, or better yet, track down a friend who's done this kind of thing before and rope them into showing you how it's done. Trust us, you're going to love it. I got doubts, but okay, sure. The only thing I've ever role-played before is when I was in cosplay, <laughs> just saying. Like in character and, and they'll have you like, you know, Oh, can I have a photo with you? And then you gotta pose. Yeah, the characters pose and stuff like that. And then you have to like say a line or two, it's like they're cool about it, you know. <laughs> that, that's the only role playing that I've ever done. Alright, before you play. Before the group gets together to play, the game master should read this whole quick start, print out one copy of each pre-generated player character, and print out enough copies of the reference sheet so each player can have one. Other players can read the rules section of the quick start if they want to, but shouldn't read an Arl's Ransom. Oh, that's why Angel said not to read page 14 onwards, okay. It may also help the players get into the world if you print or copy the page that describes the kingdom of Fel Ferelden immediately following, so each player can read that too. The character sheet. All of the information that a player needs can be found on his character sheet or her character sheet because we are not genderist. We'll start a tour of the Dragon Age character sheet by looking at its backbone, the 8 abilities. Oh my god, there's so many! Okay, yeah, one by one. Number one, communication. Describes your character's social skills, personal interactions, and the ability to deal with others. Basically, speak like a human being and be a mature adult. Okay. Number two, constitution. This is your character's fortitude and resistance to harm. I need a lot of these things, like so that I can be forever healthy and like invincible and, and just basically undefeated. Number three, cunning is a measure of your character's intelligence, knowledge, and education. Wait, okay, is this like something we have to add or something? Okay, right. Next one. Number four, dexterity, encompass agility, hand-eye coordination, and quickness. I mean, I've never had this in real life, so not having it in the game is probably okay as well for me. <laughs> not gonna lie. Number five. Magic determines your character's innate arcane power. I think this one is subjective because not all characters have magic so it's kind of useless if you have like something that is non-magic and then you add all of your points to this if there are stat points like if I'm not wrong there should be stat points. Number 6. Perception covers all senses and ability to interpret sensory data. Okay, I don't really know what this is, but it's like super senses, I'm, I'm guessing. So like if you're a spy or something, this would be extremely useful. But if not, I, I don't think this is, you know, you know, like it's not completely useful for everything. Number 7, Strength. This is your character's physical brawn. Basically, any the, the ability to be like Marshley, to, to like smash through everything in the magic. So yeah, I, I, I get it. 
Yeah, you just be Marshley. Smash everything. Even if it's a magic school, you don't need the magic if you can brute force your way, you know. That's cool. By the way, I do recommend that. <laughs> like, read it. Now, watching is a little bit long-winded, but the reading is fun. Number 8. Willpower. Encompasses mental toughness, discipline, and confidence. Huh? Is this even a thing? <laughs> Why is this even a thing? Okay, right. Willpower. Encompass mental toughness, discipline, and confidence. Like, you can make a character with just pure willpower? Like, what is this? I. What will happen if I make a character out of pure willpower and brute force? It's just like the typical hoaxy, hoax smash, you know? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> that would be so interesting. Alright, let me just finish. Uh... Oh, wait, before I even read to this, okay, there is like a little box up here about the condensed rules so basically for the people who absolutely hate reading <laughs> this is for you <laughs> about the condensed rules the condensed rules presented in dragon age quick start guide covers all the basics but you should be aware that many rules included in the full game have been left out here none of the character generation rules are included for example in addition, many rules have been simplified or narrowed for, a si for use in a single context here. If you are running an Arl's Ransom with the full Dragon Age RPG rules, then you should treat them as the def definitive rule set. Some tests in the adventure do not list otherwise relevant focuses simply because none of the pre-generated player characters have them. Other areas, particularly in spellcasting, have been streamlined here. Oh, so basically I was right, like if, if you don't like, you know, because it's such a short RPG kind of setting for beginners like ourselves who don't know what the fuck is role playing. <laughs> like magic is not like important in a sense whereby maybe you don't need to battle in this scene. That's why you gotta like choose some of the things that make sense here. But I would assume in like a, a regular D&D, it is like a continuation of series and stuff like that whereby you end one session and then the story continues the next session so whatever step that, that you've made from that point just carries forward you know just saves data and carries it forward <laughs> i'm guessing that's what happens all right so now that we know all the eight abilities that are communication constitution cunning dexterity magic perception strength and willpower each of the eight abilities is described by a single number, which can be negative or positive. A score of zero is the average for an average person, that is, a non-hero, in theaters. So basically, if we have just one, we are considered a hero. That's right! I just need to have one willpower, one brain cell, one anything, and I'll be like a superhero in there. <laughs> Doesn't it make you glad you exist? Some abilities have one or more words in their box. These are focuses which are areas of particular expertise that fall under the ability. These focuses are generally self-explanatory. For example, characters with a persuasion focus are especially good at using their communication ability to persuade someone. Oh, so like uh, to, to scam people, stuff like that. Okay, okay. Right. Also, why the fuck am I getting dissed in my own stream? Yes, I see you, Alfred, but do you really have to? I have friends now, okay? I, I have friends, I, they just don't play v, uh, the, the VTuber, no. They just don't play D&D, &D. That's, that's like the difference, okay? Right, so if I have like super high communication skills, I'll be able to scam someone effectively. If I had like um, dexterity, I'll be able to not just scam someone but also steal from someone. That's like so interesting. I'm definitely gonna be like the, the guy who like just does nothing to like the front lines and be like, oh, you know what? I am just here. Like, oh, hooray. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Definitely gonna be that guy. <laughs> that would be so fun. It's not in my character to do so, but if I could, I would. It's important to note that characters don't need to have a focus to try something. For example, characters without persuasion can still try to persuade people. What? What? Then what's the point of having this ability? What? Okay. They simply use their communication score without an additional bonus. Okay, I don't... Okay, wait, I have so many questions here. Let me just read. A focus is just an added benefit for characters with special aptitude or training. When abilities and focuses are written out in the rules or in adventure, the focus follows its ability. You might read communication bracket persuasion or perception bracket seeing, for example. Next, you'll notice some other numbers on your character sheet. 
what's the use of it then? If if like say I have five stat points and I have eight abilities and I can only like put a positive number or a negative number to any of these things and then I, I like say I put all of it into willpower and strength and then I have zero in the others and I'm like oh you know what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like steal discreetly or I'm just gonna negotiate with this sneaky bastard but I have no cunning ability I have no communication skills I have no dexterity or whatever I can still do that? What? It's like taking a degree and not using it for employment. That sounds like my life. Holy shit, D&D is brutal. Okay, the next part in here, before I just rage on, I am like going to ask so many questions at a later part. Like, flashbang is... <laughs> I don't get it. I am only on what? Page 4. <gasps> I am on what? Page... Page 4? There's 14 pages. Okay, hold on. I need to finish reading this. The Kingdom of Ferelden. Dragon Age takes place in the world of Thedas. The player's first adventure happens in the kingdom of Ferelden, which is roughly the size of Ireland. What do you know? Ireland! I, I don't know where it is, but okay. The Ferelden's have only recently become civilized. Just a few centuries ago, they will lose associations of barbaric tribes. They will each, hmm? While they've come a long way in a short period of time, Ferelden still have the heart and stamina of fierce warriors. Ferelden is a land of gender equity where women can be found in all professions and ranks are like this. Ferelden's value skill and fortitude, no matter its trappings. Basically, if you got the skills, you pay the bills. That's nice. Equality for the win, my god. The Waking Sea and the Amerithine Ocean bound Ferelden on the north and east respectively. Ferelden's capital, the largest city, Denerim, sits on the realm's northeastern shore. The heart of Ferelden is the central Banron, the heart of Ferelden is the central, but nor its breadbasket. What? Much of East Ferelden is covered by the Brazilian, Brazilian. Oh, the descriptions. Oh my God, help me. The Brazil. <laughs> this sounds so wrong. Or oh, something forest, bee forest, a dangerous woodland. The Southron Hills set the bee forest apart from the South Central Ferelden Lake. Kellen Head is a large blah, 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 English, it's not even English at this point. Lake Sea is a large freshwater lake notable for the fact that it's one of its island houses in hmm? one of its islands houses the circle tower. Basically, in the lake there is a circle tower where every mage in Berlin must be educated to avoid being branded an apostate. The Frostback Mountains border Ferelden to the west. Oh my god. Deep within them lead the dwarves of Oz Oz It's like Nyema ba Oz Ozama Ozama huh? hmm? I am so confused. Help <laughs> Ozama, which is one of the two last major dwarven cities in Thetis. Beyond the Frostback lies the Empire of Orlias to the south. Feral Feralden lie the hinterlands and the Kor 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 Wilds. The hinterlands are a harsh land where the most stoic of Feraldens live. The Kor Wilds are dangerous lands shrouded in mist and home to the Chasind, a barbaric people who didn't join the Feralden brethren in becoming civilized. It is from the Kokari Wilds that the dark spots are coming, and in great numbers. Holy shit, this is literally world building. What am I reading? These names are just out of this world. What the heck? Do I even know these names? No, I don't. Why am I doing this? Oh my god, wait. Okay, half more page. My throat. Unlike in most other lands of Thedas, Ferelden nobles aren't seen as better than commoners. Their purpose is to protect Ferelden from threats. The land are actually owned by Ferelden freemen who pledge their lands to partic to to what? To particular bands similar to Baron in return for protection. Oh, okay, okay. Freemen may shift alliances if and as they if and as they wish. So the nobility are responsible to those they protect. Bands, bands or bands, bands. Okay, we will say bands instead of bands. Your bands. Bans commonly recruit entitled knights to support them. Knights hold the title of Sir, as in S E R and not S I R, whether male or female. That's nice. Occasionally, the king appoints a noble to oversee one of the strongholds of the outskirts of Ferelden. These nobles are known as Arls. 
Oh, so the owl's thing in the quest is, is based on this. Okay. And their holdings are arlings. Not darlings, but arlings. Okay. Well, the majority, well, the overwhelming majority of Fairlands are human men and women. There are also dwarves, which we heard before, and elves in theaters. Okay, so they are elves, even though they've not said much. Okay. Most dwarves encountered above ground are either merchants or outcasts from the great dwarven cities. Even dwarven merchants, who provide a much needed service to their people, are considered low class people among their own kind. I mean, it kind of makes sense because dwarves, they're kind of like metal, diamond ores, technology, blacksmithing. And then the merchants of the dwarves are just like the You don't make anything, you only sell stuff Yeah, basically it's like errand boys But they're kind of important for the economy there though Okay, now that we know that it's dwarves There is also a... What's that? Elves Right, the elves of Thetis are a scattered and victimized race Holy shit, everything is sad They once lived in a realm called Di Dales, west of the Frostbacks but a religious war waged by Chantry sacked their homeland Who is Chantry? And scattered their people Now, some elves, the Dalish Okay, so they are called Dalish Live off the land as nomads While the remainder huddle as second class citizens in the ghettos of human cities Oh my god The Chantry Okay, now introduction The Chantry is a dominant religion of most humans in theaters So basically, you guys fucked them up And now they are living in your cities because you guys fucked them up So bad, what? and the state religion of Ferdinand. Its followers venerate a single de deity called Marker, Maker, and follow the teachings of his prophet, Andraste. The Chantry licenses mage- Oh, so they are like the magicians of the humans with a religion that killed the elves. What? Alright. The Chantry licenses mages and has a martial order of Templars to enforce their obedience all mages have a special connection to the fate and otherworldly realm where both benevolent and malevolent and malevolent malevolent oh my god english spirits dwell bad spirits dwell elves and humans can see the fate in their dreams the fates mal the fates bad spirits aka demons sometimes possess mages' bodies to enter the material world. Okay, possession. The Chantry claims that the fate is the abode of the dead. Although many mages dispute that claim, dwarves do not dream and cannot enter the fate. Accordingly, there are no dwarf mage. Okay, so if you want to be a magic person, you either gotta be like a, a, a human or an elf. And okay, so we're finally done with the introduction. Oh my god, it was so long. Ah, five more minutes. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Okay, right. I finally had a character class. So basically, there are three character class. As we know, there are the elves, there is the humans, and there is the dwarves. And, uh, well, I, I don't know if, like, you know, apart from the mage, mage talent thing, if the elves, dwarves, and humans can change classes, but it will be interesting. There are mage, warrior, and rogue. Okay, you know, I think I might go for rogue. Cause like it's fun that way They have no loyalties Alright okay The mage Oh wait what are these <laughs> Character class Okay 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 Let, Let's see what they have So there are four things over here Speed Defense Armor rating And health So speed Governs how fast your character can move The run and move actions Okay there's a run and move action as well What? Okay See action section Use speed to determine how far you can go on your turn. Oh, damn. Okay. The second one is defense. Is the target number that your opponent needs to roll in order to hit your character in battle. Arr, okay. But if you have terrible luck, then what's the difference? The armor rating measures your character's physical protection. The armor rating is subtracted from any damages done to your character, including damage from spells, unless the attack somehow bypasses your armor, which again, I have no freaking idea what this is, but sure. Health is the amount of damage that your character can take before he starts dying. Starts dying? The moment you are damaged, you start to die. What? Okay, so I, I'm like, what happens if the character dies then? Is it end of the story? Alright, I am so lost, but sure. Right, each character has a background, a race, and a class, so basically it's not the same. Each player character's background is explained on their character sheet. It describes the character's race and upbringing. 
One important benefit gained from a background in la- is languages. Okay. The four languages present present in an Arl's ransom include the trade tongue, which all characters know, ancient Tevinter, a language used primarily by mages, Dwarven, and Arlesian. The last two are home tongues of Dwarves and Arlesians respectively, although most Arlesians use the trade tongue or as or as more hmm? as or more of oh my, English. Then they use it's more they use the trade tongue more than the Orlesian, even in Orlias. Yes, that's what they meant. Oh my god, English. In Ferelden, the trade tongue is also called the King's Tongue. Each pre-generated character has two names, one male and one female. Okay, each player can freely choose which gender they wish to play. I'm definitely going for gender bender because it's fun. Alright. The Dragon Age role-playing game has three classes: mages, rogues, and warriors. A character's class, their profession, essentially determines their health, class, powers, talents, and weapon groups, all of which are also explained in the character sheet. Mages are the characters school in in the use of magic or basically duh. Circle mages are members of the circle of Magi, trained at the circle tower, and licensed to practice magic. Those who practice magic outside the sanction of the circle are known as apostates and are mercilessly hunted by the Templars. Mages use their spells to aid the party, using potent energies to blast enemies, heal allies, and offer protection. Okay, so they are basically like the healer with a bang. That's it. Alright, got it. Do they revive the heal allies? Okay. Rogues are those characters skilled in thievery, scouting, and spying, and are generally helpful in situations where a witty retort, witty retort, or a pers- Per- per- perceptive perceptive eye is necessary rather than a strong sword arm or spell. Rogues generally wear light armor and prefer weapons that rely on finesse rather than brute strength. This kinda sounds like my kinda thing. Warriors are characters trained in the art of battle who favor power over finesse. They have the widest range of weapons and armor available to them and are among the first in the party to engage the enemy, which is definitely not gonna be me because I will run. <laughs> Not the best, but sure. Over time, characters get increased in level, improving their ability and gaining other benefits. The pre-generated characters here are level 1 characters. Some of the non-playing characters, also known as NPCs, in an Arl's Ransom are higher level, but the specifics are unimportant. Their stats, their stat blocks accurately reflect their capabilities. Each class generates a character's several class powers. Class powers differentiate each class and define their roles. A mage's class power grant access to magic spell. A rogue's class powers grant the ability to backstep and ignore penalties for light armor. And a warrior's class powers provide better fighting capabilities. Okay. I mean, the warrior is losing out in my eyes over here because it's just better fighting capabilities. Are you capable of anything else? Probably not. Characters also have talents that give them specific benefits that arise through natural aptitude or specialized training. You may note that talent appeared and to give different benefits to different player characters and non-playing characters. That's because talents come in several grades, novice, journeyman, and master. To keep it simple, the description of the talents in each case have simply been adjusted. Alright, so I don't have to know this. The pre-generated characters' class powers and talents are explained on the character sheets and stat blocks. Mana points are also fully explained in the mana section. Oh god, yeah. there's so many things though. But if I'm not gonna be a magician, that's fine. Armors and shields. Armor provides an armor rating that is subtracted from the damage penalty inflicted on a character. It also provides an armor penalty to speed and defense. Shields provide a bonus to defense. Though several kinds of shields exist in Dragon Age, only medium shields are present in an Arl's Ransom. Okay, you're not giving me options, but sure, I don't have to know it then. If a character has the weapon and shield style talent, then, max, then medium shield gives a plus 2 bonus to defense. Otherwise, the bonus is plus 1. Alright, these bonuses and penalties are already figured figured into the pre-generated ch- character statistics and the NPC stat block of an Arl's Ransom. Basically, you're just telling me useless information that I don't really need to know and don't want to know. Fuck you. Weapons and weapon groups. A character must be familiar with the weapons used to wield it effectively. A character can effectively use any weapons that belong to a weapon group that he knows. The table shows where weapons belong to and which weapon group. 
A character using a weapon that are not trained and that they are not trained in using suffer a minus two penalty on attack rolls, and inflicts only half the damage. In an armed ransom, you can assume each NPC is effectively can effectively use any weapons listed in their stat block. Basically, if you are a noob, you're gonna end up hurting yourself when you're trying to use it. Oh my god, that sucks. But sure, okay, so we have some weapons over here. Weapons group axes for the strength. We have battle axe, the throwing axe, and the two hand axe. And then we have the bludgeons group, which is the strength kind of thing. So you have a mace, a maul, and a two handed maul. Alright. And then we have the bows group for dexterity. That's a crossbow, a short bow, and a long bow. And then the brawling group is for dexterity. Also, wait, why are there two of these? Oh, so the bows group is for like range. And then the brawling group is like a melee because it's fist. Wait a second, fist is not a weapon. What the fuck? You are grown with fist. You don't buy your fist. It doesn't make sense, alright? A fist, gauntlet, and improvised. Improvised weapon? What? What do you mean by improvised weapon? A rock on the ground? A flower pot? A donkey? <laughs> what is that? I'm so. I'm so lost. Heavy blades group requires strength. Busted sword. Okay, did I read this correctly? Bastard sword. What the hell is a bastard sword? B A S T A R D. It's like mustard by bastard. Oh my god, you are offensive. Long sword and a two handed sword. The light blades group is also known as dexterity. Use is a dagger, a short sword, and a throwing knife. This one kind of cool. Spears group requires strength. A spear, a throwing spear, also known as javelin, and a two handed spear. What kind of spear is not two handed? I am so freaking lost at this point. Wait. You mean to say that the spear has to be carried with two hands for particular reasons? Why? Or is it like a two spears, like two handed spears? Or oh my god, this doesn't make sense. A staves group or staffs group which requires dexterity. It's a club, a morning star, and a quarter staff. I mean, this one is kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it doesn't kind of make sense because, like, isn't this kind of things like a, similar to a wand? I'm so lost. Also, hello, you guys. Uh, the dual channel is open, but I'm so sorry. I'm so slow. This is only a page 6. I have until page 14. I want to die. Missile weapon ranges. Weapons. Crossbow. Wait, wait. Missile. They say missile. Missile weapon ranges. But they're not giving me rocket launchers. They're giving me crossbows, longbows, shotbow, throwing axe, throwing knife, throwing spears. What? These are missiles? I am lost and confused. Who am I? Okay, I'm not going to nitpick on this guidebook, but this guidebook is wrong. Oh my god. Okay, so they, they finally summarized this on focus list. After you give me all this useless information and, and horrible sounding names with terrible English, you give me this focus list. For your reference, these are the focuses that are in part of Dragon Age Set 1. Remember that having a focus is not necessary to test a try, uh, to try a test. And sometimes several focus. What? And sometimes several focuses may apply equally well to the same. What? Okay, so they don't actually fucking matter. Fuck it. Communication. Animal handling, bargaining, deception, disguise, etiquette, gambling, gambling, communication for gambling, what the fuck? I was right, it's scamming people, right? Investigation, leadership, performance, performance, persuasion, and seduction? Oh my. Oh my god, communication increases risk. Hello, all the maidenless people who are playing D&D. If you really want to get maidens, you have to use communication. Oh my god, seduction is part of a communication skill. What am I looking at? This is definitely something that I need, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be assigned or what, but like, wow, you have reads with communication. Hell yeah. Right, and then, constitu constitution. What the fuck is... Okay, this is like freaking wrong. Like, the things you can do with constitution is drinking, rowing, Running, stamina, and swimming. Oh my god, this is this is th this drinking. Like, what well, what is your special power? My special power is drinking. I'll never get drunk. Like, where where even? Like, is that? Okay, I'm not gonna question this. Okay, next one is cunning. So the things that you can do with cunning: arcane law, cartography, cultural law, engineering. What the fuck? Evaluation, hearing, heraldry, historical law, military law. Musical law, natural law, navigation, research, religious law, and writing. I mean, like, the, the writing part kind of suits me because I am a writer, but the rest of it, like, engineering and writing, you're putting two of these together with cunning? 
I would have honestly thought that cunning and communication would be like the opposite itself. Are you sure the book is correct? Are you sure the book is correct? Animal handling, cunning. Bargaining, cunning. Deception, cunning. Disguise, cunning. But they're under communication. And seduction is under communication instead of cunning. What? The book has to be wrong. It has to be wrong somewhere. The next one is dexterity. So you can do acrobatics, bows, brawling, calligraphy. Calligraphy? Initiative? Ledger... What is this? Lager... 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 What? What? Hold on. Let me Google this. I don't understand this word. Lager Damien. Ledger... Huh? Ledger... Damien. Let... Okay, I googled it. It means another name for sleight of hand or trickery. Basically, to like play tricks with people. Oh my god, wow, I'm so confused, right? Light blades, lock picking, writing stuff, stealth and traps. Okay, this one makes kind of a little bit of sense, except for handwriting. What? What? What is with handwriting? You have dexterity, you improve handwriting. What? Magic, arcane lands, creation, entropy, primo and spirit. I, it, it hardly makes sense to me, but sure. Perception, empathy, hearing, searching, seeing, smelling, and tracking. Okay, this is like being a basic human. That's that's all. Strength, access, bludgeons, climbing, driving. Dry, dry, driving? Hold on. Heavy blades, intimidation, jumping, might, and spears. What is might? Driving though? Strength for driving though? What? Okay, this is this is like a life skill and you're like, if you don't have strength, you may not drive anywhere. You shall walk like the peasant you are. Good to know, right? Willpower includes courage, faith, morale, and self-discipline. I mean, these things, <laughs> we can do without them. We are like a pile of procrastination bullshit at this point. It's fine. We don't need that. Also, there are so many freaking things. I, I just want to like ask if I can skip all these stupid things, but no, because it's very long. Should I keep this and do a part 2 or something? I wanna cry. It's like half more. Oh no. I thought I'll be done by now. Nope, apparently not. Overestimating everything. Also, shouldn't some of you guys be streaming? <laughs> what are you camping in this for? I'm so lost. Okay, that's the focus least. They say focus least though. And all the weapons in here. I'm just gonna speed read and summarize this shit over here. So basically, if you noob, you get a minus two penalty for attack rolls and stuff like that. And then you have things like basic test difficulty, test difficulty, routine, target number seven, example, riding a horse at a standard pace, easy. Target number 9. Swimming across a pond. Okay, so it's like all these things when they say, okay, these are all the tests that we're gonna give you, and these are the numbers that you must hit or higher, otherwise you fail to do this test. For example, like driving or something. It's, yeah, I... <sighs> okay. Alright, so basically the test. Dragon Age uses three standard six-sided dice for test. Two of the dice should be one color and the third should be a different color. The different colored die is known as a dragon die. Okay. You make the test. You make test to find out whether you succeed or fail any time a chancy situation comes up in the game. So it's like a wild NPC quest and then you're like, the, okay, I'm gonna attack the test and then if you fail, you fail. If you don't fail, wait, what, what is like the, the thing? If you fail the test, like say you you have to do something and then you fail the test, like are you able to retake them or something? Like I, I don't get this, but yeah, I, I have so many questions at this point, but it's not making sense. It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be fun, they say it where? Simple test. To make simple test, the most common card, you roll the three dice and with add the relevant ability. What? If you have an appropriate focus for the ability, add two more. Plus two more. For example, when attempting to stay in a saddle in a tricky situation, you roll three dice, add your dexterity score, okay, and add two if you have a writing focus. I don't know what this means. A character may only add one. Okay, I need flashbang to come in sometime now. And save me for myself because God knows I I don't it's about us. <sighs> I am struggling so much. Oh wait, let me just ping flashbang. I give up. 
How am I not? It is so. Uh, I I cannot. I like what what is what is. Why they say test and then they say simple oh, test and then I have to do math. Oh my god, this is uh, the worst part me? in D and D. I think they have to do math. Yes, hold on. Hey, are you there? I I'm trying to see if my volume is okay. Uh, you're there. You're there. I can hear you at least. Hold on. Try again. But oh, hello. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Yes, why are you so soft? Hold on, I... Uh, I can get a little closer to my mic. Uh, do you mind if I link my... Do you mind if I link your stream to a friend of mine? No, no, it's fine. They just go free, 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 go ahead. I, I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> How is uh, this? What's got, you in, what's got you like this? Maybe I can help. It's like the math portion of this like so far when they describe the world building and the characters i'm like okay that kind of sounds cool it kind of makes sense and then when they got into the the things where it starts losing a little bit of sense at the weapons part they are like the oh brawling group you can use your fist it's a weapon in what dimension is a fist a weapon you buy a fist that's not how it works it's le it's less of that imagine you've done martial arts I the do. basis of, say, ninjas is that their body is a weapon. And if you were to punch someone, you're technically using your fist as the quote-unquote weapon. What is what is making contact with the enemy is your fist. Okay. And then what is with the missile weapon range? And there are no missiles. They are just like crossbows, longbows, and throwing knives. Oh, the reason, the, the reason they use missiles is because it is more of a general term. The term missile in this context is a item or a projectile that is fired from another item. So say in a crossbow bolt, the crossbow bolt itself is the quote unquote missile and the crossbow is the firing mechanism. Just like with a rocket, there is no rockets in this game, but when you fire a rocket in real life, the rocket itself is usually called the missile and the say rpg or the tank or whatever sort of missile system you're using is as i said the missile system firing the missile towards its target i usually just i usually just use what the quote unquote missile is so say an arrow is fired or a crossbow bolt is fired or a stone is fired from a slingshot but yeah whenever they say missile think ammo think a projectile okay then what is the major action and minor action for reloading? So for certain classes or certain or certain weapons, they take they take an action to re they you need an action to fire the weapon and another action to actually reload the weapon. Major and minor actions are different. They serve different purposes. You can do certain things with a major action that you cannot do with a minor action and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Well, the game master guide <laughs> in like the what you can and can't do in game. You, well, go on. Yeah, you you technically are gonna be the game master, so like will always be in your consideration when hosting the game. I shall keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what this is, and I think most of us, like almost half of us in that D and D collab, they have never played it before. I'm happy to help you guys out. I'm rel I'm relatively new to the game, but I've okay. I'm relatively new in DMing, but I've played it for a couple years. I know how I, I at least know how the basics work. Like when it comes to action and your quote unquote action economy on how you use every part of what you can do a turn. Uh, I can help you out with that. When it comes to making a character, I can help you out with that. Granted, this isn't D and D. But it's close enough, so I all I need to do is learn the basics, and then I can probably just import most of my knowledge, and I should be fine. Okay. And then what is with all the test thingies? I don't understand the test. Why is there math? So, okay. I'll explain how this works in D&D &D terms, and it'll most likely be similar, if not the exact same, in Dragon Age. So whenever you try to do something that 
that the DM, aka me, believes you would need some sort of skill to do, or something that is relatively possible you can fail, mm -hmm. then they will make you roll a check, or a skill check. Whatever sort of stat they believe that check would use, so say, if you're trying to lift up a box uh, full of weapons, and you're not a very muscular man, then they will make you roll a skill check. And depending on how heavy the box is, that'll determine what number you'll need in order in order to succeed. So say you're lifting up a wooden box with a couple uh with a wooden box filled with, I don't know, weapons, say swords, a few spears, shields, armor, that kind of stuff. And you're transporting it to a armory. Now, you as the character may not be the may and now imagine that same character aka you is not extremely strong, but you're still trying to do this. I would say roll me a strength check. Mm -hmm. So you would roll your dice which has 20 sides and you would tell me what number is on that dice. And okay, after you tell me what that number is, we would then add on your strength modifier. Do you know what the modifier, what your modifiers are? Yeah. At least what modifiers are? I, I read here, it's something like a plus two or minus two. Okay, so <laughs> I'll, I'll explain a bit more. So, whenever you make your character, you are given a certain amount of points to put into every stat. Those points help determine where your character's strength and weaknesses are. So say if you're, I, I'm gonna keep using the same character, uh, say you're a knight, <clears throat> you would usually have a lot of strength, you would usually have, uh, if you're a paladin, if you're a paladin knight, you would have a lot of strength, a lot of charisma, and a lot of toughness or constitution. Those are the main three stats you would put your highest things into. Now, in most times when you're rolling, when you're getting your stats, you're gonna have at least one or two of your stats which actually go into negatives you have to put them somewhere so most people would put those negatives into say intelligence mm -hmm. so say that paladin knight is trying to carry that same box i mentioned earlier i would say roll me a d20 roll me a strength check and say they get i don't know a 10. that in and of itself is a not great roll but because the the knight is strong say they have a strength score uh out of possible 20 they have a strength score of 14 mm -hmm. that would be enough to get a plus two modifier Ooh. so instead of the 10 that they rolled they instead have a 12 which for my comprehension would be enough for them to pick up the box and move around so basically, if you fall short of the test requirement, your additional stats, if it meets, it gives you additional points. Yes. Mm. And that in fact goes for, for every roll. So it, whenever you... even it, Okay, I'll, I'll use this same character, but a different scenario. Say you are the... Say you are that knight, but you have an 8 out of 20 in intelligence. That would mean that for every time I tell you to roll an intelligence check, you would deduct one from your roll. Why? Because you're dumb? In limp yes. Oh no. <laughs> because you're dumb. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so you have to be really lucky to get through it then? Uh, not terribly lucky. In fact... Okay. Since, we ha since our group is going to be consistent consisting of i don't know like five people maybe even six mm -hmm. that should be enough people to cover everyone's weaknesses so long so as we you don't choose probably the have same. like one or two people with high strength one or two people with high dexterity or one or two people with high charisma and that kind of stuff mm. so in the party i in my my belief is that every party should at least have one person who has a strength in every single stat. Wait, hold on a second. Now, so, uh, is in like D and D party is like all of us are in the same group playing together, not against each other. No, 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 no. All of you are playing together. All of you are working together. Oh, 
we're not killing it's each not other. It's not competitive. It's cooperative. <laughs> Okay, the major misconception here. All right, all right. <laughs> now it makes more sense now. Wait, okay. did you... oh no, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. I was like, I'm supposed to kill them in this game. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you're, on a... you're on an adventure team. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine you spawning into the world <laughs> with all of your te with all of your quote unquote teammates, and the first thing you do Step is launch someone. like a barrage of fire spells. <laughs> At your teammates. Friendly fire, they all die, game over. <laughs> <laughs> That's a psychopath, but yeah, okay, right, right. Glad I cleared this out before we started. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so glad I did this. Okay, okay, okay. Right. And then there are like, there's so many kinds of tests there. There are like simple tests, opposed tests, advanced tests, and then there's like combat initiative actions. Uh I haven't actually read through all of these. I gave up and I was like, I need professional help. So yeah. Oh my god, there are like way too much of this. I thought I'd be able to finish all of these in one stream. I guess not. I, I can direct I can direct and help you out through at least most of it. The rest of it kind of looks very how to say it looks like it's it's very technical. Like all the numbers in here. Wow, the moment I see numbers, I want to sleep. Like all all the penalties for major actions or like minor actions and stuff like this. And then you have like turns. It's kind of like a turn-based game. Is it a turn-based game? When it comes to combat, yes, it is turn-based. Can you avoid combat? Yes, you can. But like, if is it has to be like a party decision or like a solo decision? Uh, I would really prefer that if you that if one person starts combat, then the rest of the party joins them in combat. Because if everyone is split up, not only does that create multiple storylines that gets kind of hard to get that gets kind of hard to keep up with. Mm -hmm. It also it also makes sure that it also creates this problem where one person is doing combat or maybe one or two people while the rest of the party is just doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. And that makes people wait and I don't want people to wait. I want them to always be at least a little bit into the session and what they're doing. I see. But if I really don't have the stats to make things work in combat, can I just be like the I'm a pass and like cheer for you guys, <laughs> like skip the turn? Uh, you can you can skip your turn and you can basically like play very very passively. You can you, you can even choose to run away. Oh. Uh, the thing is, there. Okay, most of the time when you get into combat at least your party, there will be a chance for the enemy to at least take a shot at you. But <gasps> you can always at least like, you can always back off, you can always like retreat. If you really don't want to fight and your teammates are fighting, yeah, you can totally just go in the background. Okay, that, that is really... Okay, but what happens if like one person dies? Is the game completely like over? Is it doomed? So if everyone were to die, then that would be what's called in D&D terms, a party kill. From there, technically, yes, the game would quote unquote be over if the DM wants that to happen. Hmm. But if one person dies, like, what's gonna happen? Then if one person dies, the, well, the, character, well, the person who would play that character would actually have to create a new one. And then we would find out a way quickly to get that person back into the storyline. Uh, if you, it's it's not forced, but it's encouraged that if a person, if a character were to die, then you would either mourn the character or let the person playing that character have one last moment as them. Uh, let them have let their character go out with a with a very nice send off, at least for most characters. I... Why? Okay. Uh, I invite you two to the stream and you call me nerds. Fantastic. <laughs> nerd That's and my the friends, noob. Rhea. <laughs> the nerd and the noob. Yes, you're all welcome. 
right? Feel free to ask questions because I have like a ton of questions. So basically, before we get Isekai, we have like one last turn. Uh, yeah. Okay, Isekai in game. Let me just think. Oh my god, wait. So it means whatever stats that they had previously can be like, you know, redone? No, you would have to go through the the entire character creation like process completely over. No. You would have to make a completely different character. You would have to do everything over. Uh, <laughs> oh, it looks like my friends like you. Marry them? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> they just really like your voice. <laughs> Why? Now they're fighting over you. No. Do you know my mic cut off today because my voice went too high? Aww. I don't know what is with the noise gate mic filter settings. The new one, right? Like everybody shared and I used it. I just cannot. Oh <laughs> uh, my god. Okay, so if I die, it's like I have to restart. Yes. No. There are there are ways for a character to be resurrected though, but you need the right characters and you need the right you need the right person and you need the right circumstances. For example. <laughs> In, if this were D and D, the cleric class, past a past a certain level, they learn the spell resurrect. Mm -hmm. It does as said on the tin. The, you can resurrect a dead person. Granted, they died within the last I think it, like within the last five minutes. There are other resurrection spells that are stronger, but that is the first one. That is the base one. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I'm I'm like thinking. Because, you know, um, I'm pretty sure there will be some very interesting players who would purposely let teammates die, right? Has that ever happened? Uh, yes. <laughs> In my very first uh, game of True D&D, my girlfriend at the time let another one of my, uh, let another one of my teammates die. It wasn't because she was aiming to do that, it was more so because she was just flustered and completely like what am i doing what is going on mm -hmm. she was playing D, D for the first time and the dm after like 30 seconds of her like uh completely flustered said i'm sorry mint i'm sorry minty the person who is currently dying you're gonna have to roll me another death save throw which i'll go over later if you want me to mm -hmm. <clears throat> After they set, after they rolled, they got a natural one, which is really bad. <laughs> oh my god! I feel like the D and D would be free content comedy sitcom. Oh, it it can very easily be so. I, I mean, you have me in there. It's definitely gonna turn into a comedy of some kind. Every time I try to be serious on the stream, it turns into a comedy. Why? I mean, it's people curse. just like to be funny. No, it, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm trying to do things seriously. I did not ask to be bombed in the nether by Ghastly. Tick, tick, boom. I went in there, Ghastly was like, hi, and then the nether portal just... Psh, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, correct. And then I had no flint and still I immediately typed in caps, help. I logged out and Mi-chan was like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, guests are annoying as hell. I forgot. Yeah, but anyways, that was what well, it tip was. Whenever you go to the Nether, always bring a bow with arrows. Always. Oh, I can bring some, but I don't know how to use them. I have terrible aim. I mean, they're they're quite big targets, so you don't have to be that accurate. Yes, but they move. Fair enough. <laughs> I was about to I was about to semi shame you, but I remember one moment where I'm just shooting at this one uh, at this one ghast who was oh, a fair ways away, but I could not hit within I could not hit the ghast for like ten shots. I know, right? And then the one that they say return Welcome to sender, you, you're trying to send back the fireball to them, it just oh. wouldn't land. That, that, that yeah, that's that's difficult. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, Minecraft is harder than the horror game. I swear to God. <laughs> it just takes you up from nowhere. Okay, so basically, I'm I'm like looking through this like speed reading as we converse. So I have new questions. They have like three class in here: the mage, the rogue, and the warrior. So the one with no 
spell ability so they don't have to look at spell stunts and whatever but the ones who do are there limitations to what magic can do can we say like oh i'm gonna teleport to like outside of this zone that kind of thing there are sp- this is again for D but there are there there are spells you have to use so say if you want to teleport and you don't know a teleportation spell then obviously you can't teleport but if you're if you want to teleport and you know a teleportation spell and the thing you want to do fits within the parameters of what the teleportation spell can do then you can do it mm, can you make your own spells or is it has to be like within game provided it it depends on the it depends on like the dm and adventure sometimes if you want to quote unquote homebrew which is like making your own stuff up and make your own spells Mm -hmm. then yes you can absolutely make your own spells and i've made me and my DD friends have made countless spells and some of them very helpful some of them kind of useless and some of them just downright funny okay but yeah you can make your long story short it depends on your dm and what they're willing to allow but you can make your own spells Alright, just out of curiosity, have you ever made a spell that allows you to do shadow clones like Naruto? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I haven't made my own spell, but I think there is a spell like that in d and I can't remember, but there are, there are like... You can certainly do uh, cloning spells. I mean, not, you can, there is a cloning spell. There are spells that allow you to like raise the dead, and there are spells that create weapons, uh, that create weapons like around you. There are plenty of spells like uh, the Naruto and Shadow Clone Jutsu. Mm-hmm. I don't think there is a Naruto Shadow Clone Jutsu in D and D though. No. But you can make one if you if you're allowed to make spells. <laughs> My evil plan to take over the world. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Hmm. Yes, like imagine you know if you... I might just allow you guys to make a few spells. I know, right? And then like imagine the dragon comes is like the hundred slaps Kage Boshi no Jitsu, and then you just like slap one, slap two, slap three. <laughs> 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 Even if each slap is just minus one HP, that's hundred HP. That's hundred HP. I know, right? That's so OP. That would be really hilarious, though. Well, if you if you were to okay. I'm just gonna see think what I would actually allow for a Shadow Clone Jutsu. How large would you want this? Would when you cast it, how many Shadow Clones do you want to make? Naruto is 100, right? Yes, but that would be OP. OP. That would be way too many bodies, and be way too many like just really, really annoying to deal with. That's true. Mm. If I were to like allow you to, to make a Shadow Clone Jutsu in game. I would probably max it out at around seven, but in reality I would probably only allow like four Shadow Clones. That's that is true. still a lot of Shadow Clones. Mm-hmm. Still a lot to deal with on the board. But it will help. That is true. So it's like the if all your party members are dead, just summon the shadows to take the place. That's horrible. They they <laughs> backup plans all of you are useless. I'll just do this myself. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Shadow Clones would be a lot weaker than you, like they are in Naruto. But you could theoretically use your Shadow Clones to help move a body. Or use your Shadow Clones to uh, distract an enemy. Or create a diversion. Mm. It's like the Oiroke Harun Jitsu. Yep. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> I just thinking of the things that people would do. The only limit in what your spells can do, at least when you can make your own, is your own imagination. Mm, and the DM, like it depends on what they allow. Oh, of, co- of course, of course. Yeah. Okay, I think there is. Most of these are kind of math, and I'm not gonna look at math for obvious reasons. I'm gonna leave it to the people. By the way, do we all have to own the dice for the D and D, or like? Is no, the... you do not. I don't. Do not. There are plenty of dice websites that allow you to just click a button, and then they'll roll a dice for you. <gasps> Yay! 
okay, I'm not gonna buy. Discord bots that do the same thing. Uh, of course, you can buy dice, but some are very expensive, especially D20s. What? Okay, okay. okay. Some if you get like a cheap D20 dice, then you're prob then you're fine. But if you want to get a, like a nice set of dice, why does that sound so weird? <laughs> Your friends are gonna call you a nerd again. Oh yeah, yeah. But if you want to get a really nice set of dice, then yeah, they're gonna run you pretty expensive. At least for what you would think dice are worth. Nah, it's fine. All we have to do is just get like a D&D bot. Or like a dice throwing bot. Yeah, that's all we, you would really need to do. Yeah, besides it's on Discord, nobody is cheating. That, that is, yeah, li literally all I need to ask, probably. Like, I'm still confused, but it's okay. I have faith that you will guide us through on 19th of June. Got it. <laughs> I just hope I am able to guide you guys. It's okay. If not, we'll just do it our way. It doesn't have to be traditional D&D. It's fine. It's a VTuber collab. It's not a professional D&D collab. It's fine. Good point. With VTubers, we don't even have real faces, names, or bodies. We only have voices and personalities, and half of that is broken. We're always scuffed. It's okay. We are scuffed. completely fake. <laughs> we are just simply figments of your imagination. Apicho is back. Beep, boop, pop. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming on to save me and my my disaster of a. Yeah, the confusion. Alright, the rest of it is math. I'm not gonna look at math. I'm just probably gonna read up this part over here about the Owl's Ransom all the way from the background of it before page 14. Yep. Alright. Yeah. Thank you. Anytime. Alright. Thank you, friends, too, for coming over. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna definitely. Okay, so, uh. Wow, all the maths part was explained not like completely, but at least now I know what can and can't be done. Basically, my strategy is going to be avoiding everything <laughs> that moves. <laughs> if there is a D&D game that allows me to avoid, you know I'm definitely gonna avoid. Because I'm not very good at counting, first and foremost. And secondly, I don't think I'm gonna pick a character that's gonna be very good at combat in the first place. I'm probably gonna be the one who, who does like the strange stuff, you know? <laughs> like, like the... Definitely gonna have willpower, definitely gonna have like communication, definitely going to have like basic perception, and the rest of it is just like, yeah, it's here and there. Like maybe cunning, and uh, I don't really know, I'm like the useless one. <laughs> It's just gonna be the useless way at the end. It's okay. What is my character? I'm a VTuber. Hey, that, that works. Alright, so I'm gonna read like this last part and I'll friend some. This is the... Let me see. This is the introduction to an Owl's Ransom, which is going to be the entire chapter thing of this D&D scenario, if I'm not wrong, that the Dungeon Master will be going through with the rest of us. So this is it. I think this is it. Like, the rest of it, not so. Like, I'm scrolling down to see if there's anything I missed out. The rest of it are like character creation chat, like character creations and stuff like that. Wow, it is so long. Oh my god. It's like, what, 20 pages of story there? In the Owl's Ransom, okay, I'm just gonna read the introduction and hope that, you know, on the day itself, it can really stick to 2 hours because, uh, you know, we're with VTubers, sometimes it goes to 5 hours. I don't really want that kind of stream, but sure. Right, an Owl's Ransom. An Owl's Ransom is an introductor introductory adventure for the Dragon Age role-playing game. You can expect that it will take about 4 hours. Oh my god! In July, it's not 2 hours, it's 4 hours. Only the Game Master should read the adventure, which contains information that will spoil your fun if you intend to play a hero instead. Background and Summary In this adventure, Arl Wojciech Neruda is expecting his children to return to their home, the Fortress Stanhold, from an extended visit with relatives in Denerim. Unfortunately, the Arling is being overrun with Darkspawn and the Arl needs every available soldier to head south with him to stop the incursion. Thus, rather than send his personal guard to accompany his steward Alenka to meet his children at the appointed location, the Arl hires the player characters, which is us. We are now babysitters. Great! Unfortunately, the steward has evil plans. She arranged a ransom scheme with the Arl's relative, one Sir 
Blacker Corbin. They planned to kidnap the children and force the owl to pay for their release. The steward had bribed the owl's guards to join the scheme for a share of profits, but since they've been drafted into the expedition, the heroes are about to fall into the middle of a situation. In addition to the steward's mechan mechanicians, the journey to meeting waypoint will be treacherous, for there are dark spawn abroad and more mundane challenges as well. Physical challenges, moral perils, duplic duplicitous al allies, all in a day's work for dungeon uh, for Dragon Age heroes. Oh my god. Okay, so basically, first, we take on a babysitting job. Second, we got scammed of this babysitting job. Third, we have to deal with the bad guys. And then, the bad guys make life more difficult for us because now we have additional enemies to deal with as well as miscellaneous chores plus we are not actually getting paid oh my god that's horrible using the adventure an owl's ransom is broken down into a series of eight encounters <gasps> i can imagine why it takes eight, uh, four hours now each encounter is labeled as a combat encounter an exploration encounter or a role-playing encounter i would like to avoid all the combat ones not gonna lie this labels let you know broadly what the players are expected to accomplish before moving on. Each encounter is also a summarized is also summarized to help you get your bearings. Combat encounters offer battle. The heroes are faced with hostile adversaries who must likely be fought. Nope, I'm gonna yeet myself out of there before I actually deal with one of those. Exploration encounters allow the player characters to interact with the environment and usually involve searching for information on some hidden route forward. Role-playing encounters require the heroes to interact with NPCs, often to learn information or negotiate aid. That's me! And I'm, I'm gonna be in charge of this. <laughs> Sometimes the nature of an encounter can shift due to the PC's player character's actions. That's why the three encounter types are loose rather than definitive. Okay, so basically, even if you get caught in like a fighting scene, you don't have to fight. You can conquer fighting scene with like other things, like maybe, I don't know, poison the enemy, sleeping gas, or... <laughs> that was just a suggestion. Most encounters have blocks of shaded text. It can be read aloud to the players, even though it's better if you summarize and embellish it in your own voice. You may wish to eliminate encounters based on how much time you have played. Encounter 5 is the easiest to cut. If you're exceedingly pressed for time, you may be able to play the adventure as in as little as two hours if you also skip encounter two. Mm. Okay, so basically it's up to the dungeon master to decide how many encounters we are gonna get. Five and two may be skippable, but there will be a total of eight. Uh, regular time is four hours, but we're gonna try and speed run this in two hours as an introduction. I don't know if this is gonna be a good idea or a terrible idea, but okay, we're gonna try. Be flexible and responsive. Ultimately, Dragon Age is a game about choices, and Arl's Ransom is built around a moral choice. Will the player character join the steward in the scheme, or remain loyal to the Arl who hired them? Okay, this is gonna be hard. Like, imagine if it's a party of five people, right? Or six people, I don't know. And half of us decide to go with like the, yeah, money talks, let's join her. And the other half is like, no, 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 we, we have to be like, we have to save the kids and stuff like that. It's gonna tear the party apart, isn't it? Like, they're... <laughs> The party has to make this joint direction in the first place, which I don't know, like imagine you're in the same party and then one person does something and then another person does something to undo the, 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 the actions of the first person. I would be so pissed, honestly. I would just like not hesitate to stab them there and then. <laughs> Even though I know they would respawn in a moment's time and rejoin, I would just plot murder every single time. <laughs> <If they're laughs> That's gonna be interesting, sure. Furthermore, while the adventurous encounters follow a linear progression typical of quest stories, the players may make choices that seem like they should alter the encounters or okay. Right, so basically if we alter it, it can it can take a very strange turn following this storyline. So the events are probably fixed, but the storyline is probably not fixed. So an hour's ransom takes pain to ensure that even un wildly unpredicted choices will still allow the heroes to play through each encounter. For example, if the player characters reject the steward's offer outright and in no uncertain terms, the children still need to be the children still need to be met, but there are still dark spawn and other dangers the steward's allies for one brought in the okay. Mm. 
Okay, keep in mind that no matter what decisions the player characters make, they will still be able to move forward and complete the adventure. Basically, nothing is stopping them from reaching the end of the story and reaching the checkpoints which are the encounters. So any decisions that the party makes would be considered a new twist in the story not following the plot and we don't have to follow the plot which is great. Right, the prologue. As you hand out the character sheet- hmm? Uh, okay, I think this is not the part that I'm supposed to be reading, but sure. So, uh, this is for the game masters. So, every player is like given character sheets and they will come with different things like uh, uh, money and uh, the currency things and like what they have inside here. Which, this is honestly, there's a lot of things. Oh, holy shit, look at this arrows, bolts, backpack, candle, flask, flint and steel, healer's kit, ink. Why the fuck would we need ink? Lamp. Lantern, they are the same things! Lockpicks, mountain garb, musical instrument, like a what? Piano? Oil, pins, pouch, quiver, rope, 20 yards. Uh, okay. Spike, tent, large, tent, small, torch, traveler's garb, water skin, wheatstone. Why do we need that? We're not cooking. Are we cooking? Is there cooking in the game? I am like so confused, but yeah, so these are the things that we can potentially buy these things i guess i i don't know like there are costs over here i think i am so confused but yes okay i i will trust that the dungeon master aka flashbang will get us through all the the the, 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 the the confusing parts right so this is like page 13 and then 14 onwards it's the start of it i'm not gonna read this one i'm done i'm done for today hooray i survived 14 pages of dnd oh my god that's good good enough for me 14 pages of that, can you imagine? I made it to the end, oh my god. Ah, my brain cells, do I even have enough brain cells left to write another chapter today? <laughs> ah. Alright, so, I see a lot of people in chat earlier because Flashbang shared the link, so yeah, I, I wasn't quite expecting anyone to be here, but thank you for dropping by. I need to get back to working actually so i'm gonna end the stream over here i'll see you guys next time so the dnd is tentatively confirmed on the 19th of june time zone to be announced later we're still like in the midst of discussing uh everybody is in different time zones so that's that's gonna be a little bit of an issue i don't think too much of an issue because yeah it's like literally 12 hours apart and then another two people are 12 hours apart and those two people are eight hours apart from us or something like this it's very confusing but it is what it is uh i hope things go well i'm still in the midst of getting everything together but i will be hosting a Dan stream <laughs> i think it's this saturday yeah a Dan stream this saturday my chat box is still not working for this stream so i'm gonna have to troubleshoot that as well that's all i'll be doing i'll see you guys next time when i do see you guys next time stay tuned Hit the notification if you are subscribed and you want to catch stream because I sometimes, most times actually, I stream without a plan. <laughs> so that's all for today. Good night, good day, good good whatever that you are, okay? Bye-bye!